Today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own digital clock on your website using Velo. What's up you guys? Thanks for tuning in with your boy Nino and I got a tutorial for you guys today on how you can set up your own digital clock on your website. So I received in my comments when I was doing the countdown timer uh, a comment asking about how I could do a digital clock on your website and based upon just any type of local time, right? So I just thought to myself, hmm, let me just go ahead and just do that real quick. I mean, it's a quick go-to tutorial and I think I could just make this really quick for you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. But I just wanna say thanks to all my subscribers out there. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, definitely check this video out. Uh, that I have for the countdown timer here. So definitely go check that out in the right hand corner as I speak right now. But let's go ahead and get started with this digital clock. Okay, so what I did actually, what I started to do is if you don't see this developer mode, all you have to do is just come up to your development mode and then you just turn that bad boy on, okay? Then once you finish with that, what I did was I went to the add section and I just added a box here. Okay, I added one of my boxes that I created uh, originally, and I just put it here. So as you can see, this is a box 39, okay? As you can see, I added another text box inside of that. So all you have to do is just drag and drop that right into that box area, and you should be good. Okay, so that is all the design setup, okay? Now let's go ahead and get into the code. As you can see, we are in the header. So this header section here, which is a strip, but it's a strip within the header. If you wanna actually know where your you know header is, you just go ahead and right click in that top section, and then you come down here to overlapping items, and as you can see, I have my header right there. But we're not actually worried about that right now, I just wanted to show you that real quick. So what I wanted you guys to know is that if you come down to your code uh, panel, you can actually see right here a masterspage.js file. You can actually find that below the global site section in your page code right here, but also it can show up here in your code panel, okay? And in this code panel, it actually gives you sections. So this is your page section, and then also this is your overall master page section. So master page is literally what it means, it's just, the whole entire page, all right? And this is all pages on your website. So that means your header and footer, okay? So in this, uh, I am already like put down the code uh, right now. Actually, you don't need this. I don't think you need it. But if you guys want it, just leave it in the comments below. I'll uh, make sure to put that back on there. Um, but yeah, so it's just an easy code. I actually went ahead and just, uh, pushed it out uh, and wrote it out so that, you know, you guys could just understand my methodology. Everybody's methodology is different. Uh, you can get a whole bunch of methods to get to the same solution. So don't think that this is just based on like this sole code, okay? There's many other developers out there that have created certain things to do certain, you know, certain things for the time. But for right now, we just wanna get the time so all we are doing here is uh, I created a function, okay? And it's called share time, all right? And in this function, we actually are calling downtime. As you can remember in my other previous tutorial, I had downtime right here, okay? So go ahead and check out the tutorial and uh, check out how I did that. But right now, we're just gonna talk about this section. Okay, so. In this section, what I have done is I created a set interval. Okay, set intervals are on a set interval time frame that you want it to be. So I made it for a second, okay? This is one second, okay? So if you guys ever wanna learn more about set interval, definitely go over to Mozilla uh, Developers. Um, I, I really think that this is a, a very useful site um, I can actually leave it in the comments here so that you guys can know about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in the comments uh, just so that you guys can know about that. 
and I will put that in the URL and you guys can just check that out on my website uh, when I leave the code there, okay? But as you can see here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually just collecting the date, okay? It's just easy as one, two, three. Once it, I get that timestamp for that particular time, then I want to go ahead and dive into getting the hours and the minutes for that date, okay? So this is going to be now time dot get hours, which would be new date dot get hours and also get minutes. Now, what I want to do is I want to check and see if this thing is, has only a length of one. Okay. If it has a length of one, then we know for a fact that it's only a single digit. So let's go ahead and add that zero there so that then it can actually uh, span across the whole thing. If you guys don't want to use a zero in this, uh, you know, digital clock, then by all means, you could just omit these right here. Okay. You don't have to use them. All right. But I think it's pretty cool to use these here. Uh, and actually just to see what your time is. Okay. Now I don't actually use these. And as you can see in this Wix code, it grays it out. Okay. So that means I haven't used this variable yet. And as you can see, I haven't used downtime variable yet either, but I want to let you know that if you ever set your interval connected to a variable, then you can just go ahead and clear interval. And once you clear your interval, you can actually put that actual variable in there. So this is either if you want to just stop your digital clock or if you have some type of parameter set up here or any type of button up here that you want to just go ahead and click stop. Okay. If you stop it at that particular time, then it stops, right? So that is actually how you can create this digital clock. Now let's go ahead and, uh, let's see, let's go ahead into the actual 12 hour format. Okay. So I created it in 12 hour format because it automatically gives you the 24 hour format. All right. And not everybody is accustomed to reading the 24 hour format. So I just made it a little bit more simpler by researching up a 12 hour format. Uh, so basically you can get this on stack overflow or any other type of coding website that actually teaches you about that or has community coders there uh, to help you guys out. So as I can see right here, uh, I actually want to get the AM PM. So I'm going to see if the hours are greater than or equal to 12. If it is, then it's going to go into this uh, ternary statement and it's going to pick out PM. Okay. Now, if my hours are lower than 12, it's going to make it false. So it's going to kick it out as an AM. Then once we get the AM PM, we want to go ahead and get the hours. So we're going to do hours module 12. Okay. And we're going to find out where those hours are. If the hours are equal to 12 or equal to zero, then it's going to update that zero to 12. All right. Because if you do 12 module 12, then that gives you zero. All right. And so that means if hours equals the zero right here, it's going to change that thing over to a 12. All right. So if there is minutes here, uh, which there will be, <laughs> why wouldn't there be anyways? So minutes less than 10, you're going to get that zero. Okay. We're going to add that zero to the minutes because we don't want to just have a minute one and that's it. Like, you know, it says 10, 1 PM. You don't want that. You know, you, you want to have 10 Oh one PM. All right. Just to make sure that your mind is viewing it right. All right. And then once we have that actually in the structure that we wanted, just like we did up here, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and say string time equals hours. And then we're going to insert that colon and then we're going to insert the minutes and we're going to put a little space there just so that we can show the AM PM. All right. And then once we get that figured out, then you go ahead up to your element. You actually look at that element, see what that elements ID is, which you can see here is text 87. Then you go ahead and place that right there for that element. All right. And then you say dot text equals string time because this whole thing is a string. As you can see, it is a variable string. All right. So let's go ahead and test this bad boy out. So let's go ahead and preview this bad boy. 
So as you can see, it actually shows the time uh, specific to the local time that the person may be in. And then also is giving us the AM or PM, okay? And as you can see here, guys, it is working very well, okay? Now, let me know in the comments below if you have any more questions about this or if you just, you know, are curious about uh, doing anything else with date and time. I'll do the research and I'll definitely get it back out to you guys as quick as I can. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Have fun with it. And that's how you actually create your own digital clock on your website. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely give it a shot. If you have any questions, like I said, drop it below. Thank you so much for watching you guys. And if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next video guys. All right, ciao.